Hello and welcome to my channel. Today, I will be taking you through the best study tips to ace any biological sciences exams. For more than 100 years, psychologists have carried out research on which study habits works best. Most tips works for almost every subject, however there are crucial tips you need to know if you really want to say a goodbye to failing biological sciences. You don't always have to cram, or pull an all-nighter before your exam. In this video, I will be showing you the top 5 best study tips to bag A in any biological sciences. These tips will really be helpful especially if you are a college or university student. Before we proceed to unraveling these tips, like the video, subscribe and turn on the notifications to get notified whenever we post a new video. Tips number 1. Repetitive Study Routine The first tips I will be sharing with you is repetitive study routine. This has to do with, studying the course several times, over different days in a week. Study the material weekly, not just week or days before tests or exams. You also have to keep plenty of time between studying and testing yourself, this will help your brain to retain what, you have learned on a long-term memory. Tips number 2. Active Recall Active recall is one of the most powerful, efficient and best ways to learn absolutely anything, in a very fast way. I can testify to that because I've used it in most of biology exams and it helped me secure grade A plus in my exams. You don't have to be a scholar to master this, all you need is consistency. Active recall techniques have also been studied to be efficient in areas like biology. The more we practice retrieving information from our memory, the better we get it. Check out the video at the top right corner if you want to know more about active recall. Tips number 3. Diagrams and Drawings. The usage of diagrams and drawings especially in biological courses, can never be underestimated, due to how effective it is. This helps you regain sights of what you have learned easily. Aside using diagrams from textbooks and slides, research has proved that drawing something helps anyone remember things easily. Another study confirmed that, drawing is superior to study techniques like reading or writing, because, it forces you to process information in multiple ways, visually, kinesthetically, and semantically. You should definitely give this a try whenever you want to learn those cranial nerves and pathways. Tips number 4. Study to understand not just to memorize words, don't just memorize notes and slides, this will only give you a passive familiarity with the material. To study to understand, you need to attend most lectures. Most lecturers will likely provide answers to possible questions that may appear in exams, this will enable you to focus and understand the right stuff. To confirm your understanding about a topic, practice by explaining the material and applying it to different situations. Why should you do this? Questions sometimes pose entirely new situations, which you need to analyze, even though you've never seen that situation before. This is a secret in biological sciences. However, memorization sets in when you need to study some technical terms. Tips number 5. Make use of flashcards. Flashcards are effective for learning biology when it comes to memorization of some terms. Write down the terms and concepts you're trying to memorize on one side of a 3x5 card and their definitions, and descriptions on the other side. You can study biology using flashcards on your own or with another classmate. Check out the video on the top right corner on how to use flashcards for memorization. Tips number 6. Map out related materials. Absolutely every topics in a course are related in one way or another. Try to see how disparate lecture topics are connected. How does a concept or process tie to a larger picture? How does new material build off of prior course content? How could it be built on later? This will help you provide the best answers in your exams. When providing an answer with causal connections, it's crucial to build a logical and adequate chain of connection between the initial cause and the final effect between topics. 
For instance, you may be asked to explain why a virus causes cell death. You might answer, because it stops or hijacks the cell's metabolism. That might be adequate in a normal conversation with your colleagues, but it is not enough for an exam. There are too many questions left unanswered, how does it infect the cell, how does it replicate, and what causes cell death? These are questions that will provide you detailed answer to the original question. Depending on the course and the level of detail normally employed in it, it may be necessary to provide more answers. I hope you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the notifications button to get notified whenever we post a new video.